Today's recipe calls for feta. I'm gonna show you how to make this super infamous Greek salad. It's really simple to throw together and it won't take very long at all. So with that said, let's get started. The first item we need to prep for our healthy salad is one large English cucumber. If you can't find a large one, two medium sized ones will work just as well. Cut off both ends of the cuke. We'll peel the entire cucumber starting from the top going towards the bottom. You'll take the skin off in an alternating pattern. This step is not necessary, but it'll give our salad a nice aesthetic look. A little friendly reminder, give all the fresh salad ingredients a thorough wash slash clean before you start to prep them. Now that you have a half naked cucumber, cut it in half. Once in half, cut those halves in half again. Next, cut the cuke into half inch little half moon pieces. I find the easiest way to accomplish this task is by using the tip of the blade. You can cut faster without things sticking to your blade, or you can cut it like you would anything else by using the heel of the blade. If you go this route, you kind of have a built-in measuring device. The cucumber that's stuck to the blade will help you gauge the next cut you make. This will help keep things more uniform in size. Whatever method you decide to use, this repeat it until the entire veg has been cut. Transfer all the half green moons over to a medium to large sized holding device. Following that, grab three medium sized tomatoes. Cut the core out of the fruit. Also cut a small piece off the bottom to make it flat. After that has been done, cut the tom in half. From there, make four wedges. Cut the tomato wedges into small chunks of goodness or cut them into any size that'll fit into the hole that's in your face. I think the best way to cut tomatoes is using a serrated knife. Using a knife like this will make it way easier to cut through the delicate item. Since this salad is so simple with the addition of eating the ingredients in their raw form, it's best to use the highest quality ingredients you can get your hands on. The best quality of goods will give you the most flavor possible. Pro tip, hit your local farmer's market to grab your fresh ingredients. Now that you have the juicy red chunks, transfer them over to the same bowl that has the cucumbers. This next step is not traditional, but sometimes the rules just need to be broken. Season the bowl of goods with a few good sized pinches of coarse ground kosher salt. Give everything a good mix up to spread the salt around. The salt will help pull out some of the excess moisture these two items hold. But most of all, the salt will help bring out more of the natural flavors that they hold. It'll be hard to season the salad later, so it's best to do it early on so we don't forget. After you've made it rain salt, set the bowl aside so we can move on to the next item. Grab a small red onion, cut the top off leaving the hairy root end still attached. Following that, cut the onion in half, peel the skin off. We'll only be using half of the veg that makes people cry. <laughs> Save the other half for another recipe or for the next time you make this salad, which I'm sure you'll make right away because it's that good. Anyways, thinly slice the purple vegetable into half moons. Pro tip, if you want to take some of the strong flavor out of the onion, soak it in some ice cold water for 15 to 20 minutes to mellow out the taste. Following that, grab a medium sized green bell pepper, cut the top and bottom off the pep. Hang on to those pieces, we can still use them. With that said, cut them into quarter inch slices, cut around the stem of the pepper. Once you've cut off all the usable sections, toss the stem. Next, we need to take the core out of the pepper. There are a few ways of doing this. I find the best way to do this is by cutting through one side of the pepper to open it up. After you have that, lay it flat on the cutting board and then run your blade following the curvature of the pepper around the core to cut it out. If you'd rather play it safe and keep all your thingies, you can pull the core out by hand. If doing this, ensure you get all the seeds as well. Also, cut out the white rib parts of the pepper as well. Make four sections of the not hot pepper. From there, cut them into pieces that are roughly two inches long by a quarter inch thick. Repeat the same process for all the sections of goods. The last and final thing we need to cut is some Greek pitted Kalamata olives. Traditionally, you don't need to cut the olives, you just throw them into the salad whole. But I want to play it safe and keep all of my teeth, so I'm going to cut them in half to ensure there are no pits in them. You can add as many olives as you wish to your salad. Just keep in mind they hold a briny flavor, so going overboard can make the salad too salty. As reference, I ended up cutting around 13 olives. That was the perfect amount for me, especially because I'm not a diehard olive fan. Now that everything has been prepped and is ready to go, it's time to build this healthy concoction. This salad is a bit different compared to what you're used to when you think of a salad. We don't mix everything together and then 
then plate it, you place everything together in the bowl you intend to eat it out of. So grab your favorite large eating bowl. To that, add in all the tomato and cucumber. Stack it nice and high so we get that sweet aesthetic look to it. Once all that has been placed, pour some of the tomato and cucumber flavored liquid from the holding device over the goods. This stuff will hold some flavor from our ingredients and some of the salt that we added as well. Discard anything that is left over. Following that, add the green peppers on top. If you haven't noticed already, I went with too small of a bowl, so you might want to use a bigger bowl than you think you need. I did give mine a little mix just so I could get a good picture for the thumbnail. After the peppers, add as much of the sliced onion as your little heart desires. Next, toss the olives on. You should also add any of the liquid that has come off of them as well. This will help add some more flavor to the salad. When plating things, ensure you spread the items out. You don't want large clusters of ingredients all in one spot. Plating it this way will give you a better eating experience because every bite will be a little different. Once all the fresh goods are in the bowl, we need to add our dressing, which also isn't a typical style of dressing. First, you'll add five to six tablespoons of a good quality tasting extra virgin olive oil. EVOO is known as a healthy fat. It's best to use a good oil like this because of the taste, but also because of the health benefits associated with it. After that has been added, we'll add two to three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. This stuff is not traditional, but the acid will help cut through the richness of the oil and add another flavor profile to the dish. Sprinkle one teaspoon of dried oregano over the top of the salad. If you have it, use Greek oregano. I kept it basic and used what I had on hand. Finally, we need to add a block of some Greek feta cheese to the top of our salad. It should be seven ounces or 200 grams worth. Don't use feta crumbles because they'll have a coating on them to prevent them from sticking together. We don't want that stuff in our salad. Add the final touches by drizzling a little oil over the cheese with a small sprinkle of oregano. This will add flavor, but most of all, will give the salad a really nice finishing look. To my understanding, the best way to eat this thing is by eating it straight out of the bowl it's served in. You'll take your fork and break a small piece of cheese off the block, then do your best to get a piece of everything on your miniature pitchfork for the best bite. Or you can eat it any which way you wish. Pair this delicious salad with a main course of some lamb or seafood, or eat this whole thing on its own. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. All right, now that our salad is done, let's give it the old taste roux. So looking at it, it, came out super aesthetically pleasing. There's a ton of bright colors going on for it. That nice pop of red, that purple, the green, and the big chunk of white on top really pops and stands out. The oregano sprinkled throughout makes it look also really enticing. Overall, it looks super refreshing and it looks like it's gonna be really tasty. So let's give it a shot. Try to get a good bite with a little bit of everything if possible. We'll see. Got to focus super hard to make that happen. Yeah, that bite has almost everything. This is hard trying to do it. Holding, hold it. There's the perfect bite. Then you'll also notice there's a ton of liquid on the bottom of your bowl. You can't really see it, but those are all the juices from the cucumber and the tomato and then the olive oil and the vinegar as well. And what you do is you take some bread and you dip it in there as well to get all that delicious goodness. And uh, yeah, and then you eat some more salad. This salad came out super delicious. Even though it's really simple and not all that complex by any means, it still packs a ton of flavor in it. And each ingredient on its own is really flavorful, but combined together, it's like the perfect melody of goodness. And each bite is a little bit different than the last one you took. Maybe the first bite you get some green onion and cucumber and a tomato, and that tomato just pops in your mouth with a ton of goodness and flavor. And then in the background is the cucumber and bell pepper, which also have their distinct flavors and bring a ton of freshness to the table. Then the next bite, you might get an olive and a red onion and you get that distinct briny olive flavor and that pop of red onion as well. Then the next bite, you get a ton of cheese on there. And of course, it's gonna be super tasty because cheese is always good. Then in the background, that oregano brings a nice flavor profile to the table. Then we get a ton of richness and fat from our olive oil and of course the cheese, but the acid in the tomato and the red wine vinegar we added helps cut through all that richness and fat. 
And the cheese and the olives bring a little bit of saltiness to the table, which is always super tasty. And all the juice on the bottom is really flavorful as well. Texture-wise, it's like so crunchy, it's out of this world. Then we get a little bit of creaminess from our cheese. Overall, this thing just slaps. This salad would be perfect for any hot summer day. It's really light and refreshing, and it's easily customizable as well. Maybe you're not a huge fan of onion, so you go a little bit light on that, and you like things that are more acidic, so you add some more tomato and a bunch more vinegar, and you're a huge fan of olives, so you pack it full of those. There's endless opportunities, and I'm sure whatever you decide to do, it's gonna be really tasty. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I have this uh, huge bowl of healthiness to crush. So I'm gonna go do that. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Really tasty. This thing is getting super heavy now. So I gotta set it down. It's heavy. Salad absolutely. <laughs> this salad can kind of wow. Then the next bite you might get the next bind together. It's like the perfect melody of goodness. It's like when the Power Rangers all come together and make the big Power Ranger thingy. I don't remember what it's called, but anyways, it's basically like that. Summer day is really light and refreshing and it would be perfect on a hot summer day.